Hi. Hi, everyone. Welcome to AgaFlow Talk Show. Welcome. My name is Agatha and I'm the founder of AgaFlow Talk Show, whose aim is to shine on people's genius and their extraordinary beings. And I've got a lovely guest today whose name is Madeline Walker. Welcome, Madeline. Hi. Thank you so much for inviting me. You're very welcome. Madeline, as it happens with every single chat that I have and conversation with lovely individuals just like yourself, I'm going to ask you to describe who is Madeline Walker through the eyes of your own, through your own eyes. Okay, well, I am an animal communicator and an empowerment coach, but I also feel I'm an earth guardian. I am passionate about uh, connecting and raising awareness actually for humankind to start really connecting with the animal kingdoms and the nature realms for the sake of our future and of our beloved planet. So that's my passion and my mission and I feel it's my role to uh, yeah, promote the animal kingdom and the nature realms as I said as much as possible to get people to wake up and the message from the animals is all about re-empowerment, about getting humankind to realize their magnificence. And that's why I feel I love being an empowerment coach because the animals have given me techniques to then help humans. So I love my work because it's always exciting and the animals just amaze me every day. You mentioned that you this for the sake of future humanity. What do you mean exactly? Because I know that animals are part of the realm of, of who they belong to where we belong. Basically, they are part of us. But what do you mean by for the sake of humanity to reconnect to, huma to, to animals? Well, our, our pets, uh, as a kind of one-to-one, -one, they are our healers and teachers, they mirror so much that we need to learn, we need to remember. And I spend a lot of time traveling and working with wild species and the wild species always communicate to me that they have their fins, their hooves, their whatever, um, on the pulse of the planet. So they really give me information and share their messages and their wisdom about how we can all join together as Earth Guardians to start to heal Mother Earth. And to it's all about unity consciousness, about interspecies unification. So my belief is that the animal kingdom, the animals are really, um, if not equal to us, are superior to us because they they just seem to know they, have, they haven't lost the connection. Many of us humans have become very disconnected to the planet and to the earth and to the rhythms of the earth and to ourselves actually. We've, you know, we feel like we're disconnected. We don't really feel we are complete or we're whole. And somehow there's a kind of a lack everywhere. And um, if we really start to communicate with animals and listen to the animals, li listen to the, the trees and nature realms, whatever, um, we start to really listen to ourselves and remember who and what we really are we truly are these magnificent multi-dimensional beings and um, a little dog said to me remember the bigger picture and as far as I'm concerned the bigger picture gets bigger and bigger and bigger and the animals have just brought me down this amazing adventure really and uh, taught me so much and it's a huge privilege and very humbling actually wow do you know what came to my mind I probably won't make any sense by saying this but but I'm going to. Is it that animals have this group consciousness that they are able to, to feel and sense on a wider scale, on a bigger picture, as you say? And humanity has evolved so much now that the individualization if you like, took place. So there is no longer the group consciousness, but an individual consciousness that's happening right now. Well, I believe animals have both. I believe they have their own individual soul consciousness and they do have a group consciousness. So say a herd, herd consciousness or a pack consciousness. So as I said, I feel that an animal's soul is just as 
valid as our human soul. And in fact, they've taught me that actually we can make this choice in our kind of pre-birth soul agreements. We can choose which physical vehicle would be the best way of our soul's evolution to expand even more. So we may choose to come back as an animal. We may choose to come as a human and vice versa. Mm-hmm. And so to me, there's no, there's no difference. And that might be controversial to some people, but to me and what the animals have taught me, I mean, I've had many people whose animals have been their children before. Uh, they've been, or people, people have been uh, in a pride of lions before. All these kinds of amazing things. And it, when you are able to access this, um, it kind of makes so much sense as to how you are coping or not coping with your current incarnation. Because the animals have taught me very much about going back to past life traumas that they've shared and how we can go back and heal them. Horses have taught me how we can go back to a past life and re-script it, create a whole new story. So the trauma has no need to impact on us at a cellular level anymore. So all these amazing techniques the animals have taught me, which I just love to share with my human clients. And uh, as I said, they just blow me away. Could you give me one example of what really stuck with you working with animals? Like oh, an God. event or on an experience. So many. So many. Um, oh crikey, I'm just trying to think. Well, um, yeah, I had a lady just the other day uh, with a dog, and they both had really, really chronic digestive problems. And the dog was 12, and all her life she'd had problems with her digestion, and her human also had real, real problems. And I felt the dog had taken this on to mirror and to flag up what what needed to be healed. And this happens very often. Um, Animals will take on a physical uh, symptom or an illness to make us either, it's either the same as their human or it's something they may take on a cancer so that their human doesn't have to go through that. But what I immediately got, because somehow I'm able to intuit from the animals what the past life trauma might be. And what I got was that they'd had an Egyptian past life where they'd both, both they'd been sisters and they'd been poisoned. And that um, the trauma of that passing, they both, obviously they both died and that had never really left them. And the dog had chosen to come back as a dog to show complete unconditional love and to flag up all this digestive problems so that eventually, um, someone could help them go to the root source, the root source of it, the root cause. And then by rewriting the story, because we just had this session, we, we changed the story so that they never died of a poison. They managed to escape uh, and live out a long, happy life. And um, I'm waiting to hear how they're improving. I'm really hoping that they will. But I've had you know, an amazing feedback from performing these past life script rewrites. And it's all orchestrated and all guided by the animals. They tell me, you know, what we can do. You know, a horse taught me this technique. A horse said to me, well, can't we just have a happy ending? Why do we have to have such horrible endings? And I said, well, um, I don't know. And the horse said, I'm going to show you how you can create a happy ending. I thought, oh, okay. And um, and I was in the stable with the horse and it's human. And the horse just created this amazing new story uh, telepathically. And it was just amazing because the horse showed me what happened and what the human was wearing, who they were. And then this human who had never done any kind of regression work, anything at all, uh, was getting exactly the same pictures in in, in their mind. And so I knew we were all on the same page and the horse was kind of telepathically showing us myself and then the human and the human could describe exactly what she was wearing, who she was, what happened. And it was just amazing. And um, that horse had been extremely uh, jealous of the other horses, had was trying to wreck its stable, was very, very flighty, very, very nervous. And after, after we changed the story, thanks to this horse showing us how, the horse was completely different, completely calm, uh, didn't uh, attack any of the horses. And the human just felt like a huge weight that she didn't even know she was carrying, just lifted off her. And so that was the sort of start of, of the whole past life script writing and the realization that animals can share many, many lifetimes with us. Like they're soul family, you know, we, we, we travel in soul family groups. So our loved ones, be they human or animals, can all journey with us for our collective kind of soul's uh, evolution. So like I said, there's so many amazing stories and I've written some books with some of the case studies because 
uh, I just find them so amazing and to have the feedback of the healing that can take place is, is just wonderful. So would you agree or could I actually say that by rewriting our past story, our past script, we actually heal ourselves? Could Absolutely. I say that? Yeah, we, you know, because what happens is you create a, a whole new dimension. We know that time is very malleable and that we can create a whole new dimension where the trauma never happens. So the physical and emotional impact of the, those old cellular memories no longer exist. They're no longer relevant. So you choose then to only allow the healed life, the kind of healthy, happy life to impact on you at a cellular level from now on. And that's what happens. And um, it's amazing. And I had, a, I was swimming with a humpback whale and she taught me how we could actually heal our past DNA, our present DNA and our potentially our future DNA by this special frequency that she told me about. So there's oh, so much that they, they're teaching us and are holding the space for us to really, this whole ascension process, this whole raising of our vibration and our, our, um, our awareness and it, like I say, my vertical learning curve is just, it is, my learning curve is just vertical because all the time they're teaching me new techniques, new understanding. And um, I've just come back from South Africa. I was out with uh, white lions. They, they're known as the star lions. And that was amazing. Again, just um, completely mind blowing and mind expanding and life changing and wonderful. What made you to go there and join the White Lions? Was there anything inside you that you said, oh, let me try this, I've never done it before? Well, I've been to this particular place with these White Lions twice, but back in, well, it was probably 2007, somebody sent me, I don't know who it was, uh, it, these things just happened to me, I just get an email or read something and I just feel called to go. So I got an email uh, telling me about these White Lions and this particular male lion called Mandela and um, there was a picture on on the email, and it was a beautiful, beautiful white lion with a superimposed uh, Egyptian ankh on his third eye. And he had these incredible, getting goosebumps just thinking about him, he has these incredible blue eyes. And he just knocked me off my, my computer chair. I went, oh my God, I really, I'm, somehow I have got to get to meet you. Somehow, I don't know how I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna get to meet you. And it took two years, and again, suddenly out of the blue, I got an email saying there was going to be a very small group um, going to these white lions, and would I like to be part of the group? And I'm going, yes. And somehow I found the money to go, and so I met Mandler um, physically. And he, again, the impact of him in the physical was even more powerful than, than just his, his picture. You know, just being in his presence was oh, unbelievable. And uh, since then, he's been he's been a huge um, kind of guide for me and a motivator. And when I was there the first time, we had to make a mission statement as to, you know, what was our mission in life. And I wrote on this board um, to be the truth, the voice of truth for the animals. And I've endeavoured to be that ever since. And he's now in spirit. He's passed over, and he, but he's still guiding me and nudging me forward. And um, taking me to connect with other huge whale species and connecting his heart force with the heart force of the whales and all these kind of things and still giving me amazing information, which again, I write about and, and create meditation CDs and all these kind of things with his message and many of the other beings as well. I mean, I'm now getting into working with incredible dragon allies and all that kind of thing. So again, the bigger picture is just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And uh, yeah, well, when I was with the, out there recently, I went with another lady and we were connecting with um, the elfin beings and the elfin ancient prophecies to connect with the, the white lion uh, prophecies because the, the Shangan and the Zulu believe that the white lions, rather like the white buffalo and the Native Americans, that when the white lions return to their, their heartland in South Africa, that the earth can start to heal. So these are, they believe these are very sacred star lion beings that come, are sent from sun god and so they are incredibly sacred and um so we worked anchoring in this ancient elfin lemurian kind of uh, prophecies together with, with the star lines and it was unbelievable unbelievable experience and um yeah all these experiences kind of stay in your heart 
and they're just they're just there forever and it's a huge huge blessing so um yeah so i just get these messages saying do you want to come and do this i mean i got an email saying oh would you like to come out and co-facilitate uh, a retreat with humpback whales off the pearl islands of panama would that be something you might be interested in and i thought well let me think about it well i think i could do that so we spent a whole week on a beautiful catamaran cruising the pearl islands which are absolutely exquisite off uh, the mainland of panama with humpbacks all around you and it was absolutely stunning so i don't know quite how this happens but it feels like uh, the animal kingdom or, or the universe whatever kind of picks me up and takes me to these places so i can learn more so i can share more uh, in my writing and my workshops and whatever i'm you know giving seminars or whatever um and so i know that you know quite a lot of it is self-financed but somehow the money appears and it always seems to happen that just at the right time when i think well i have no idea how i'm going to how i'm going to afford this and then uh, something just happens and um so it's, it's quite miraculous and just so exciting because i never quite know what's coming next and i think i've just learning to really trust to to go with it so that i can really be of service even more to humankind to the animals to the planet that's what i really feel like i'm here to serve in whatever way presents itself that i can keep learning and keep keep giving really keep sharing you mentioned that you wrote a book do you have it somewhere close by that we can look at um well i've written uh four books now and um oh. Uh, done two card sets and today I just wanted to show you because today actually this very afternoon I arrived home and my new CD and you can see it is just uh, just came today just so it's called source and it has some beautiful meditations lovely white lioness gave me a fabulous meditation and I was out with the Bushman of the Kalahari and so I recorded the Bushman's voice the ancient clicking language and so he, he's speaking on one of these tracks as well so, um, yes, I'm so excited to hold it in my hand. It's finally here. Um, but I can, yeah, I can, I can, if it's okay, I can get my books to show you. Would that be okay? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. I will just stop them for you. Hang on. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I'll just stop them for you. I just love when someone makes so much effort to bring something that they wrote or they created. I think that's magic, that's a gift and a talent like Madeline has. So while she's looking for the books. Oh, it's coming. Oh, she's coming back. Okay, okay, okay. This is very exciting for me. I'd love to share. <laughs> so, uh, I've been an author with Fintorn Press, which has been wonderful, and they are now um, passing over quite a lot of their authors to Inner Traditions, which are a wonderful uh, publishers in in uh, South, uh, sorry in America. So, this is my first book. I don't know if you can see. Uh, hang on, it's called An Exchange of Love. And it's got me with a beautiful dolphin. So this was kind of how my story started and um, some of my adventures, but some of the early case studies of, of um, soul retrieval with animals and just about the whole exchange of love, literally, that animals give us, gift us. Um, and, uh, and then my next book was called, is called The Whale Whisperer. Oh, oh I can see. <laughs> it's a bit of a... Um, a reflection so it's on the cover is a beautiful whale mother called Gina that I met off the Dominican Republic and she gave me some beautiful messages and I don't know if you can see on the back there's a picture of Mandla and a, an elephant I swam with and a seal um, so there's all kinds it's it's healing messages from the animal kingdom to help mankind and the planet so, so this is really about my wild adventures um, and some of the sacred sites that I visited and the messages that I gleaned and then this one <laughs> is your pets past lives and how they can heal you so this is oh that's fantastic but I'm not gonna speak because I don't want to be on the screen so show okay. it again <laughs> can you see that you can see yeah so your pets past lives and how they can heal you so this is all the amazing case studies about the whole past life healing 
And then finally, sorry to, to bore you, but this is my new book, Unity, which again tells the stories really about um, the new healing techniques, but then again about the really higher dimensions of the message from the whales and the lions and the dragons and all that kind of thing. So it's really about, um, it's called, yeah, Unity, the power of the animal kingdom to guide you home. And this one's taken about four or five years to really, cut again, to, to come to fruition. And um, I think I'm probably, it's a little bit ahead of its time. I think it, it's probably the most out there book I've written. But um, it just felt so important. And it was hugely frustrating because um, it's hard to find someone who would publish it because it, it's not exactly mainstream. And, um, but I felt really frustrated to think, well, these incredible beings are giving me all these amazing messages and I'm failing them if I can't share them. You know, it's like, oh, come on, this is important. I'm not important, but the messages are really important and I have to get them out there. So I'm so thrilled to finally get Unity published and um, I'm hoping that people are you know, going to really enjoy it and be open to the possibilities of some of the concepts that are shared in the book. That's absolutely amazing. Now, I'd like to know where it all started. Tell me, Madeline, what events or event took place in your life that directed you somehow towards the animals and towards where you are today, really? Yeah, I mean, it's trying to um, make it a long story short. I've always been obsessed with animals all my life, and I think my, my parents uh, loved animals, my mother in particular. She was so patient because I was always bringing waves and strays home. But when I was about four years old, uh, we were going to go to Barnstable Circus the next morning, from the next day rather. And so the night before, yeah, I was about four years old, I had this vision and it was so clear. It was crystal clear. And so I was completely convinced that that was what was going to happen. So I said to my father, um, oh, when we get to the circus, there's going to be an elephant driving a car and it's going to be wearing a hat and um, it's going to drive around um, the circus. And so my father's I, I don't think so. No, I, I don't think there'll be an elephant driving a car. Yes, there will. <laughs> there will be an elephant driving a car. So we went to the circus. We sat down almost front row in the big top. And the first thing comes on is an elephant driving a car with a hat on. And I turned around to my father and said, I told you so. <laughs> and he was so shocked. He took a photograph, an old black and white snapshot of the elephant sitting in a car poor thing how on earth they trained it to do that I've, I hate to think but it was in this kind of jeep kind of car with this stupid hat on and it was just driving the car somehow was going around um the big top you know, in the circus and I think they must have thought oh my god you know um who is this child and I, and I was completely convinced because that's what I was shown but I think since after that um maybe I tried to kind of tone my visions down a bit because you know it was didn't want to be thought of as weird and obviously children can be quite unkind and you know you get teased or bullied or whatever so I, I kind of reined everything in and maybe shut it down quite a lot and then I went to I mean I, I was married to a very conventional veterinary surgeon surgeon so we um, ran our ran our own practice together and I was always very very concerned about people's sense of loss with their animals and, and really had huge empathy for people when their animals have died because you know sometimes like, oh, it's just a dog or it's just a cat you just get another one and I and I really knew how heartbreaking it was so I always made particular uh, took a lot of care in trying to support the the, the owners um, but I could kind of always see an imbalance in animals especially horses and then one day I went to visit my friend and see her horses and it was really cold so we came inside afterwards having a cup of tea. And she just got this little Jack Russell puppy called Sam. And he was sitting uh, by the warm, by the big range that she had. So I said, oh, can I have a cuddle? So he was on his back, um, with this lovely pink tummy. And then he just looked at me right into my eyes. And I heard this voice in my head saying, I'm a reincarnation of my friend Lee, she's called Lee, of Lee's old dog. And I've come back to help her through a hard time in her life. And I went, who, who said that? Where did that come from? You know, so, a not over a, a puppy's talking to me, tell, you know, in my head, and then it's talking about reincarnation. I'm going, what? What is in this mug of tea? What am I drinking here? <laughs> so, I pushed him down before I dropped him, 
And then he went and sat next to the range, and then his, his little chap Russell head started to morph into that of a border collie with very specific spots on the muzzle. And I'm going, oh my goodness, what is in this teeth? And then suddenly just morphing back into his little Jack Russell face again. And I didn't have the courage to say to my friend, have you, did you used to have a border collie? I just said to her, have you had a dog before? And she said, oh, not for years. I said, well, what did you have? She said, I had a border collie called Briar. Why do you ask? And I said, well, um, well, um, Sam's just told me that he's a reincarnation of Briar and he's come back to help you. Um, do you have a photograph of her? So she said, oh, I, I don't know, I'll find one. So she found one and brought it out and it's exactly the face with this very specific spot pattern on its muzzle. I'm like, oh my gosh. And I said, well, that's what Sam's just, just shown me. And she said, well, I said, no, it sounds completely crazy. Um, but she said, actually, I've had him five days and he just seems to know me. He seems to know my every move, my every mood. And he's got such a wise head on his little shoulders. And from then on, it's like everything just, you know, it was just wide open. I could hear animals talking about all kinds of things. But specifically this kind of, well, it's a kind of gift or an intuition of being able to intuit past lives. You know, the, I, get a, I can get a very clear picture from an animal uh, of, I mean, they're not all traumatic. Sometimes they're, they're lovely, beautiful, happy lives. And, um, you know, I had a horse that was um, in a past life with, with another lady. and they had the most amazing connection, absolutely, completely as one. And the lady in, in this life, her family couldn't understand her at all. It was like they had this alien child because she'd always had this passion for horses. And I think they lived in central London, never had anything to do with horses, couldn't understand why their daughter would have anything to do with horses. So she always felt, until she was you know, an adult, that she could never have that passion fulfilled. And when she became obviously older and, and married and moved down to Devon, and, and she rescued this horse from. Portugal and he was so traumatized but in them coming together it kind of they healed each other she remembered why she always had this passion for horses and the horse this horse was telling me why it had come all the way from Portugal to find her to to make this lovely connection again and and to really help her understand who she really was and why she had this incredible connection with horses and so that was beautiful um so yeah it, it's just like I said it from that one little puppy, Sam, he just blew my whole world wide open. And that was, it wasn't something I went looking for. It just happened. Were there any setbacks? Was there any time at all when you were thinking, I don't know if I should trust my intuition. I don't know if this is the right way to go. Should I now be concentrating on something else? Um, well, it, it's it's not always easy when you're in relationships and they can't really understand uh, the way your life direction is going and, and it's it's not like um I really had much choice I you know I, I tried to kind of think well I'll, you know I, I won't do it then I'll, I'll just kind of um, tone everything down and not really talk about a lot of the things especially the really out there things but um, even then it, it just didn't seem to work and and although I was trying to as I said, to kind of, yes, kind of uh, tone it, that rain it back kind of thing. I think my partner just decided that, I think they just knew on a soul level that they had to remove themselves so I could really do the work. And although it was heartbreaking at the time, I know that I wouldn't, I would never be doing what I've done now and never would have you know, had the experiences that I've had and be able to write the books that I've, that I've done. If I'd stayed with him, you know, it was very, very hard because my mother died at the same time. So it was incredibly hard. Um, but I can, when you look back, you really notice how you're going to keep being nudged in the right direction. You know, um, it's like these opportunities just suddenly appear, um, and I always feel that I'm that I'm guided every step of the way. But it's it's not easy. It does felt like I've had to let go of an awful lot to be where I am now. But and you have to be really focused to do the work to have that follow that mission and that passion. But I feel that it's it's repaid so many times by some of the amazing experiences that I've had. I mean, I've got three lovely children. I, I feel so honored to be a grandmother. I have a lovely grandson who I adore and a new one coming uh, end of January. So I mean, I feel I'm in my crone years, but I feel very lucky to be in my crone years. I feel hopefully I'm a, a little bit of a wiser woman, a bit wiser than maybe I was before. Um, 
but I feel excited about sharing some of my adventures with my grandchildren and hopefully they'll think I'm a quite a cool granny one day they'll they'll maybe appreciate that um, I have had some pretty wild adventures and um, but one day they'll go wow you know she was she was she lived life <laughs> you know so um, that's what I, I feel I would like to you know be a legacy for them you know and you've mentioned earlier before we started the live conversation that you also do lots of work in the community in groups can you tell us a little bit about that um well i run a group every week in my local town uh it's it's mainly it is a meditation group but it's it's for holistic stress management so uh anybody can join they don't have to be really really um deeply into their spiritual path um you know one of my uh Previous hats was a, a stress management consultant. I used to run classes on art therapy, music therapy, and so you know I can I can adapt and tailor make uh, group sessions to be uh, yeah it's just fairly uh, mainstream and, and just about relaxation and release of stress that kind of thing. And um, but the group I'm running now they are we've been they've been coming quite a few a few years and we've you know experience a lot of I, I try and bring in something new all the time you know different meditations different cards you know oracle cards that kind of thing and lots of different kinds of music to kind of you know, inspire them to visualize uh beautiful journeys and um just to give them two hours of time out just to, i always say it's your special time just for you to to really honor yourselves uh I run animal communication courses uh, because we can all do this. It just depends how open you are and how far you want to take it. Um, and I run a, a course called Gateways to the Ancients, which is really about reminding ourselves of our, our kind of heritage of, you know, we are these amazing star, multidimensional star beings, and we forget that we, we, we in our human three-dimensional bodies, we, we start to believe that we're really, that's all there is. We're just this human body, and it's a big struggle. And you know, what's it all about? Why are we here? What difference could I possibly make? You know, that kind of uh, mindset. So, gateways to the ancients. Uh, I absolutely love to facilitate. I, I facilitate it in um, different countries, especially in the Netherlands. Absolutely love running it in the Netherlands because they seem to be so thirsty and hungry for this kind of information, and always get the most amazing groups and amazing things happen and uh, I ran a weekend not this last weekend weekend before locally and had a fabulous group and again just beautiful beautiful beings came into angelic beings and uh, connected with the whale the whales that I'd, I'd met physically but they came in the energetically etherically with us and it was oh, wonderful um, and I just I just love working with them and hopefully re-empowering people and, and helping people to wake up and remember who they really are and how amazing they really are mm. and where do you find the time to treat yourself to some <laughs> you know relaxing time to, to silence massage or whatever how do you or when when do you find the time um well not a lot really um i think my favorite thing to do to unwind is either to walk my dogs or in the evenings, sit with my dogs and have a cuddle with my dogs and watch a nice old movie and just chill in that way. And I love that. And being with my family um, is, you know, is is my. It's not exactly restful, but it's uh, it's it's my kind of time out. But yeah, I think I think just hanging out with my dogs uh, is my kind of therapy, really, because they're so healing and and um, they just love a cuddle. I can hear my cat meowing. <laughs> um, yeah, so. But you know, I, not to say that I would love to find more time to go and have a nice massage because that is just bliss. But maybe I can gift myself that after Christmas, perhaps. Oh, well, you must, because obviously working with people, you know it more than anyone else, I guess. That you do need to re-energize once you've, you know, left a group or a any kind of place where you know that you're doing your best to empower someone. Now yeah. it's time that you get empowered. I find walking with the dogs in, I've got beautiful, beautiful woods near me. There's, there are lakes and woods and being with the trees, being out in nature with the water elements and uh, all these amazing 
forests, I find that very re-energizing. So that's also very grounding for me as well. So again, I think um, I've had a long day, not so easy now with the dark evenings, but um, it, again, it just it just grounds me and um, it just, there's, you can just feel all the elementals and the nature divas all around you. It's a fabulous area where, where I live, just beautiful. Um, and the dog, it doesn't matter what the weather is, the dogs always want to go out and so they really motivate you to get out in the freezing cold or pouring rain and then once you get out there it always makes you feel better, um, it blows the cobwebs away and just again reconnects you with nature. Interesting because something came to my mind now, I don't know where from but it did. So the question would be how do you stop yourself sometimes from all those impulses that you know, we all might have at some point in our lives to be able to, or wanting to say something, but you know it's not the right time. How do you cope with that? What do you use to stop yourself sometimes uh, from? Yeah, that can be difficult. Uh, sometimes, you know, I don't go to many kind of horse shows anymore, but when I used to, I could feel, or zoom, something like that, you know, um, you know, you have horses screaming at you saying, oh, my, the saddle really hurts and my back hurts and I really can't do this and I'm being uh, shouted at because I can't do this. I can't physically do what's being asked of me. And that's really hard if you feel it's really not appropriate to go up and say, excuse me, your horse's back is really bad. You should not be riding that horse whatsoever. Um, the only way I can, I can cope with that is to just visualise wrapping the whole situation in a kind of bubble of white light. Um, and in the past, somehow that seems to bring about a situation where something could happen, something could help that animal, because it is really hard. And you, you know, it's like with humans, you, you know, you can't heal everybody, you can't save everybody, you can't save every exactly. animal, much as you want to. Um, and sometimes, of course, it's about um, giving support for them to pass, be they human or animals, and, and that can be a huge privilege. Uh, but it's still very hard. I mean, even knowing what I know, you know, my own animals have to pass, it's still absolutely heartbreaking. But I do have huge comfort to know that they are in spirit, connecting with me and still supporting me, and they are around. But yeah, it's hard. It really is when you see things. I mean, I was in town, in the local town a couple of weeks ago, and there was a lady with a, a little staffy, and she was shouting at the staffy and kicked the staffy, and it was really hard. Um, but she obviously had you know, quite a lot of issues and, and problems herself. But this poor little dog was just terrified. You know, and I just sort of said, oh, you know, maybe you shouldn't shout at the dog. And you know, she was just so full of anger at herself mainly and, and life. But there were quite a few people that are kind of reporting her to the RSPCA. And you know, I just hope that they both could get help really. Um, and sometimes these animals choose these very, very difficult, as humans do, very difficult life paths to be ambassadors you know, um, I, with um, an exchange of love, that was a captive dolphin. And I really do not condone captive cetaceans at all. It's, it's so cruel for them. But I got called to go to this uh, sea aquarium to connect with this particular dolphin. And what they told me was that on a soul level, they, they choose these very, very difficult, very challenging, heartbreaking lifetimes to raise awareness because just for example, the captive dolphins, you have so many people go to visit them and they can connect with many more people than dolphins in the wild. Not everybody's lucky enough to go and swim with a wild dolphin. So they are huge ambassador beings to raise awareness and wake people up to um, the whole issue of, of captive captivity and even to kind of download some of their frequencies into, you know, Joe Blogs and the Misses kind of thing. Um, so they are huge sentient beings that take on these very difficult roles um, in order to teach us and to heal us. Same as you know, many humans have horrendous lifetimes, but on a soul level, they sounds you know not so nice to say, but on a soul level, there is a choice they've made for part of the journey. I don't really believe in bad karma or punishment or anything like that. What the animals have taught me is that it, it's all part of our soul journey. It's maybe other sides of the coin. And they say to me that you know our each physical incarnation is just a blink of an eye, you know, in in our eternal soul's journey, really. But it's not easy. <laughs> this is so interesting. 
I could be talking to you until tomorrow, but of course I still have, <laughs> still have so many questions. But coming to a close, because I'm, aware, I'm very much aware of the time, can I please ask you, what else is there for you that you haven't tried and you would like to expand on? Is there any, any dreams you haven't you know, materialized or haven't acted upon? Is there something that is still lurk in some way in the future that you haven't really seen yet oh well you know you want it yeah the trouble is i have a bucket list and it, every time i do something tick off my bucket list i ha add about five more things so it just keeps getting longer and longer so i better live a nice long time <laughs> in order to do everything um i have seen blue a blue whale i have been uh in a boat in the water with a blue whale but i would love to swim with a blue whale that's the biggest creature on the planet they are enormous but i'm also really getting very interested in healing with sound um this whale that i met uh, talked about this special frequency it's called it's a 2.9 megahertz frequency and it's supposed to be incredibly healing for humans for their water within them and the water that they drink but also to help heal the waters of the planet of our beautiful blue planet so i'm becoming more and more interested in channeling sacred sound healing sound and that's really uh, expanding right now. And uh, yeah, and I'm starting to channel like special light language and all kinds of healing sound. So that's a new, kind of new direction that I'm, I'm working towards. And I, I felt on the cusp of something really new, a new way of working. And I feel this is what it is. It's kind of leading up to. So that's really exciting. But there's so many places I want to still go and so many amazing animals I want to still meet. So I'm just open to whatever comes up next. Going to Egypt uh, end of February um, to work with the elfin energies again and to connect with some of the sacred sites, but also to go back. I've been with these dolphins before. They're off uh, Master Alam in the Red Sea. Beautiful, beautiful um, resident pod of about 60 spinner dolphins live on this fabulous reef. So they gave me a technique to take people back to the healing temples to release um, old contracts, old kind of implants, anything that's been blocking their, their sort of forward progress. And the dolphins have taught me how to do that. And these particular pod of dolphins were the ones that gave me that technique. And so it's going to be wonderful to go back and see them again. I haven't been with them since 2010. Wow. So that's to go back and see them again. It's like swimming in dolphin soup. They just all come like a great wall of dolphins all around you. And it's, it's the most incredible experience. I'm so excited about sharing that with other people that, that are coming on, on the trip. So that's exciting. So that's you know, the first thing that's going happening uh, next year. And so we'll see, I'm um, maybe teaching in Germany and France and the Netherlands again. And um, we'll see what else unfolds. So if anyone wanted to know more about you, get in touch with you, what would be your website or email address if you don't mind sharing? Yeah, well, my website's just madelinewalker.co.uk. People can find out more about me, how to maybe book a session, an empowerment session with me, or to uh, ask me to help with their animal, um, can see my books and CDs. Um, yeah, so I'm here to serve. So if I can be of help in any way, then yeah, please get in touch with me. And what would be your message for us, for me, for anyone who is um, listening? Okay, well, I think never underestimate the wisdom of your animal from a house fly to a humpback they all have a message for us so if you've got a little pet mouse little pussycat little dog they are the most incredible sentient beings and they are here to help you they're here to re-empower you to heal you and yeah and also don't underestimate yourself trust in yourself that's what i was going to ask you that would that also include don't underestimate anyone no. especially yourself exactly yeah absolutely madeline thank you so much for joining me and agreeing to this interview i have learned so much and i just hope that everyone else who watched you know our conversation or is going to watch it found a really true inspiration coming from you that probably many people don't know about especially when it comes to the animal kingdom and what it is that they try to convey to us humans i appreciate your time i know you've been busy today and i, and I admire you that you still 
you know, after all the work that you've done today, you still sat down with me and had this conversation and please keep in touch. Absolutely, and thank you so much for allowing me to share it and to show my books and, and everything and talk about my work. I'm always, as you probably gathered, so happy to talk about it because uh, that's, again, my role is to is to share it and to, to get it out there so more people can really appreciate the planet, really. It's all about the planet. And will you come back again if, if I ask you sometimes, perhaps next year? I'd love to. Anytime, just uh, let me know and I'd love to come and talk some more. So thank you so much for uh, inviting me today. You are more than welcome. Thank you for being who you are and sharing all that you are about. Madeline, you are a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful example of a woman, of an individual, of a soul who is able to convey and pass on to so, you know, so many of us the talents, the skills that you have. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Madeline. You're so welcome. My pleasure. Lovely to connect with you. <laughs> Me too. Have a lovely evening. And you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.